Okay, we're going to do a harder example-ish of a full derived rule derivation. It's not really that hard at all. So the first thing I have is a negated existential. Because I have all my rules available to me, I know I'm going to QN that immediately. This is a universal of a biconditional, no big deal. Universal, this is a negated universal, so I know I'm going to QN that immediately, and then I have to show an existential. So one, show there exists x not dx. Now, I know that typically if I have this show exist x with an existential, I would employ my normal strategy. My normal strategy is to actually realize I need to show not d alpha and so on. But with all the rules available to you, brute force proofs sort of just work. So I can just AID this immediately, and then I can quantify or negate that. So this makes it so that I don't actually need to worry about my strategies at all. Um, it's sort of the lazy man's way to do derivation. Now, in terms of automatic moves, I'm going to do my QNs immediately. So I get for all x, not bracket ax and bx, and that's premise 1, QN. And on line 5, I will now QN this which is there exists an x not cx, uh, and that's premise 1, 2, 3, 4, qn. Now this is nice because immediately on line 5, I now have an existential, and I always know that I should existentially instantiate the second I can. So I have not ci, that's 5 existential instantiation. Okay, so now I basically just look around. Here, this is that nice universal generated from a, my AID. This is essentially premise 1. This is basically premise 4 now, has reduced to that, so I still have these two to work with. And I just look to match. Well, the only thing I have fixed on the board is the C. C is fixed to the variable letter I, so I can match anything I see with C, which is right here. So on 7, I now match this, and I get AI by conditional, not C, I. And that is premise 2, UI. On line 8, I'm going to split this up, not CI, arrow AI, that's line 7, conditional to biconditional, automatic move. And on line 9, I see I can automatically modus ponens, and now I have the nice 8, uh, line 9, which is AI, and that's from 6, 8, modus ponens. Okay, so I've generated a nice A statement with the letter I, I look around, okay, well, there's this. So this is, uh, why, so sorry, why did I pick this one? It's because I just looked around for other things that had A in them. So here's an A. It hasn't been uh, UI'd yet, so I can now UI to match. I get not bracket AI and BI, and I got that from 4 UI. And now, because I have all my rules, I can just demorgans this, not AI or not BI. That's 10 demorgans. And... I need, this is a disjunction, I need the negation of one side, I have that right here, and I can affirm the other side, not bi, I took 9, I double negated it, I took 11, and mtp, no problem. And now I've generated not bi. Well, I look around, do I see any b's anywhere? Yes, right here. Uh, and so I just match. di arrow bi. That's premise 3, UI. 14, not BI. Obviously, I can now say not DI. And uh, that is 12, 13 modus tollens. OK, so this typically happens. I basically have used all my premises, and now I just need to find the contradiction. Well, I can basically just hunt around and look for all my singles. There's a C, there's an A, there's a B, there's a D. But I also have this line up here, which I never used. So of course, this is universal instantiation, DX, DI down here. I will match it so that on line 15, I get it to basically go not, not, DI. That's line 3, UI. And there's my ID right there. It's on line 14, 15, ID. So this proof, there's nothing to it. It's not hard. It's very straightforward. It just demonstrates the basic move. The only trick-ish here was to know that you, know, you could QN and then you had to EI immediately. Um, 
lots of sort of basic questions actually play out this way, where you end up UIing everything to the same letter once you figure out what that letter is. Uh, so this question, it's not too exciting in that way because everything ended up just mashing to I. Other questions, you'll actually have to sometimes UI more than once, or sometimes you'll be working with two letters. Uh, it depends how many existential instantiations there are. So this is uh, actually sort of a decent sort of look at a quantifier negation type question, but it's also a good look at what I mean by brute force. We don't have to do any real thinking here. Uh, quantifier negation and all the other rules actually lets us just get out of the parks quite nicely. Okay, good luck.